2017 has to be the best year for Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid to surface as an anime. With what the world witnessed through the year of 2016, Dragon Maid holds a few moments of great subtle commentary on these kinds of issues. Before I explain myself, I should make it extremely evident to everyone watching that what you're about to watch is going to be looking at Dragon Maid through a more political lens. Some points may be more conservative and others more liberal. I'm a believer in equal thought and that analysis can be done in such a way that you don't have to agree with literally everything that's being put in front of your face. Your political thoughts should have nuance and not just be straight from a template. Something I preach heavily if you followed me for some time is that subjectivity is a gargantuan deal. No one person can come along and tell you you're objectively wrong for thinking certain things. I mean, everyone has a different set of morals and that's the crux of many politically charged arguments. Now, with that out of the way, and everyone who thinks I'm going to inject Fox News or CNN into an anime video, typing furiously in the comments about I'm what's wrong with the world, let's talk about Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. While I do want to focus on the anime as a whole, there are parts in this video where I want to primarily focus on the English localization of this show, because certain lines of dialogue had a more direct message behind them in the dub. The subtitles and even the manga had some differences that allowed more nuance to the interpretation of certain lines. Dragon Maid tackles a ton of different kinds of themes, ideas, and topics, and the main idea we're really presented with simply is a dragon, Toru, living her life in the human world while trying to express her love for her roommate Kobayashi. This love, as Toru suggests, is sexual, and therefore there's many scenes and <laughs> I mean many scenes that push the show into a borderline shoujo eye category. As a main idea, this is extremely crucial with the other minor points being commented on. One of the more prevalent themes in this show is the struggle the dragons have to face to assimilate into human culture. Their two ways of life aren't compatible, and we can see that Toru's father is a firm believer in this. He takes a huge conservative approach to how dragons should follow the law of their world to prevent a future invasion of the human world. Kobayashi works as a bit of a middleman between Toru and her father to conclude the series in a fulfilling manner. With a conversation, since she claims, This fight between you guys is just dumb. Kobayashi acknowledges that the Emperor of Demise, Toru's father, has legitimate points in his view, but also understands why Toru wants to stay in the human world. But even though Kobayashi and the Emperor of Demise don't see eye to eye, and even have a near-death confrontation, Kobayashi opens a dialogue between the two characters that eventually ends in an agreement to disagree. The Emperor doesn't approve of Toru's choices, but does leave her without arguing further. So what can we equate this to? Well, in recent events, Europe is dealing with issues with Muslims integrating into European society, transgendered individuals are having trouble integrating into a society and being accepted, and whatever your thoughts are for each predicament, you can't really disagree that there's legitimately people struggling on both ends due to what's going on. Toru's father represents an individual coming from the perspective of the people that already exist in a particular area, a spokesperson for both the world of humans and the world of dragons in this case. While the dragons we meet represent those individuals who struggle every day to fit in, looking at the characters from a more direct view, chances are Toru's father wouldn't assimilate due to his ideologies. Can you fault the guy for this? Not really. He's been living longer than any human on Earth, and while he may be a bit… narcissistic, his points are honestly understandable. However, we can notice that every dragon that comes into contact with Kobayashi is able to assimilate to the human way of life. Now, Lukua might struggle with that a bit, but she's still learning. There's a scene in episode 12 regarding Lukua that I actually want to talk about. After Toru answers the door and Luko is waiting there to come in, Toru makes note of the outfit Luko is wearing. The subtitles say something akin to, yeah, people are telling me I should cover up, while the dub directly mentions the patriarchy. What are you wearing that for? Oh, those pesky patriarchal societal demands were getting on my nerves, so I changed clothes. Give it a week, they'll be begging you to change back. Lukua, a character who is the butt of many sexual jokes in the show, ranging from basically throwing herself onto a boy named Shoda, his name is fucking Shoda, to wearing extremely skimpy bathing suits on the beach. 
So it's kind of awkward to see this character completely covered up with the only skin showing being her face and hands. When Lukua blames the patriarchy for having to cover up, Toru replies, Yeah, they'll just want you to go back to how you were next week. As many people know, the patriarchy is the butt of many conservative jokes. The localization team for Dragon Maid, with script writing by Jamie Markey and ADR direction by Kyle Phillips, hones in on a societal commentary in a very ironic way. The patriarchy is seen as an oppressive social system, and in this case, it's oppressing Lukawa's ability to sexually throw herself on the general public and on little boys. Good on you, Funimation! Similar to episode 12's patriarchal joke, in the first episode when Takia, Kobayashi, and Toru go out drinking, we see our first glimpse at the kind of characters we're really going to be following. But the highlight of their drinking escapade is when Kobayashi begins to talk about how Toru is acting like a terrible maid. While the bit starts out extremely hilarious with Kobayashi's drunken self, lecturing Toru on why threatening murder is bad, she then begins to critique Toru's maid uniform, equating her uniform to a cosplay maid, and not a real maid. The scene kicks into full gear when Takia screams this. Kobayashi, you're right, she's just your basic cosplay maid! It's cultural appropriation, but without any culture! Now while all these scenes are shown in a pretty hilarious way, it goes without saying that it's great that all of these subjects are tackled without actually hugging onto one side of the argument. Takia's cultural appropriation argument may come off as funny to those that think it's a joke, but it can also be taken extremely seriously by those who believe that the issue is extremely prevalent, especially with how Toru is shown throughout the series with her true knowledge of maids. Think about this for a second. Yeah, we're talking about a show that's about cute dragon girls doing cute dragon girl things, and Fafnir doing Fafnir things, but we're dealing with different factions in this series, in a similar, but not so similar way to something like Code Geass. Toru lived the life of a dragon until she met Kobayashi and learned that not all humans were as evil as she had thought. But her father, while not explicitly opposed to the humans of this world, doesn't believe that dragons should involve themselves for the repercussions it could have on the human world. Neither argument could be seen as wrong, both characters raise good points, and in the end, we just see how opposed these views can be. And since I mentioned Code Geass, let's talk about Lelouch for just a moment. Was he really the bad guy, or was he good? It really depends on how you look at the situation. Lelouch had some extremely heroic deeds he accomplished early on, and even fought against his own evil, his father, Charles. While his actions later down the line became more explicitly evil, in the end, was his final intention one of good or one of evil? Well, I guess more remains to be seen with the upcoming third season of Code Geass, but as it stands, I think this post I found on TV Tropes sums Lelouch up very well. And that is why I hate objective definitions of good and bad. People keep trying to shoehorn everyone into two moral absolutes when it's not even applicable. So I would say Lelouch is someone who is trying to accomplish something good for mostly good motives through mostly bad methods. Obviously, the world is a rocky place right now, with Trap Coon being the US president and all, but I think this anime couldn't have come out at a better time, because it's not one of those good versus evil stories like we always see and still thoroughly enjoy. It's much more than that. This is one of the biggest pros to that elitist series, Legend of the Galactic Heroes, all you noobs hear about. The idea of good and evil isn't black and white. Hitler was a great person if you ask the right person. But does that mean that he's evil? Well, that depends on you morally, and most people would probably say, yeah, Hitler was evil. But there's still a small minority that might say he was a pretty awesome guy to chill out with, and this is getting extremely grim. In the end, this all comes back to our current state of the world. Whether we like it or not, Trump is around, and for some he's a great guy, and for others he isn't. I wouldn't necessarily call either end good people or bad people, though. There's a lot more nuance to their reasoning than what's just on paper. Just like the nuance that if you think this video is red-pilling you, you should probably check out this other video about Revolutionary Girl Utena, where you might feel blue-pilled. We, as humans, are capable of such intellectual thought that we shouldn't live by a template. We should take what we morally find right and wrong from each, and find our own views. 
Within reason, we should listen to both sides of an argument, not just one. That's what Miss Kobayashi would want for us anyway.